All right. Welcome hey, everyone. Class. Welcome, Jiazin. <laughs> yeah, hi everyone. Uh, thanks for joining us today on Wednesday. And uh, Shafras and I are from the Google Developer Relations team. We are super excited for today's session, uh, Flutter Engage Extended Southeast Asia. And for today's speakers, we have uh, speakers, speakers joining us all the way from Taiwan, uh, Singapore, and Indonesia. Yeah, so uh, I see a lot of you are saying hi uh, to us on our YouTube uh, channel. Do let us know where you are tuning in from as well. And before we begin today's session, uh, let me just briefly introduce uh, what Google Developer Space is about. So um, Google Developer Space is a platform for developers and startups from around the region to learn and connect with one another. And we have a physical space in the Google Singapore office, but due to COVID, um, we moved everything online. And we regularly host events with developers and startup communities. So uh, we are really looking forward to today's session um, because there are a lot of new announcements and new features uh, that, were that was announced uh, last week. Yeah, so uh, do keep in touch with us via our website or the various social media channels. And uh, with that, I'll hand over to Shafras to share more about today's session. All right. Thank you very much, Jiasin. Thank you, everyone who's tuning in today for Flutter Engage Extended Southeast Asia version. Um, so we have like an exciting um, agenda today, don't we, Jiasin? Yep. We do, right? Like we have like things. some. Yeah, that's yeah, that's right. We have some amazing uh, speakers joining in from uh, with us today. Uh, gonna talk to you about like the announcements from uh, Flutter to which happened last week, and then uh, we have some you know, uh, we have a software engineer who's joining with us from Flutter team. Uh, we'll be sharing like an interesting topic today um, that you might not be hearing like uh, very often. Um, and, um, so we have a um, very good panel of uh, speakers and also we have a special person who will be moderating the Q&A section towards the end of the event. So if you have questions, please do uh, put it up in the live chat now. Uh, so those will be picked up and again, you'll get all of our amazing speakers to answer as well. Um, so stay tuned because uh, there'll be a quiz and there'll be a prizes as well. Uh, so there'll be prizes, there'll be a quiz. Join with us. It's going to be fun. It's uh, it's going to be like super exciting as well. Um, like just to try out your knowledge in terms of Flutter uh, and what you think about that too. Uh, so it's going to be pretty uh, pretty amazing. Uh, so stay tuned until the end uh, to uh, get your questions answered and also to be a part of the quiz. And most importantly, this will be an opportunity for you to learn more about flutter um you might be like a new person who's moving into flutter or maybe you have some experience in flutter as well so this is for all of you and we are bringing down the experience of engage uh, flutter engage to uh, southeast asia through flutter engage extended 2021 uh so jasin i think without taking much time should we introduce our first speaker for the day let's do it awesome let's invite our first speaker uh first speaker is uh shi hao so hi shi hao thank you for joining hey justin hey shafras glad to be here awesome awesome so shi hao um is the first speaker for today and he's um based out of taiwan um and uh, he's the soft he's a software engineer um, and a part of uh, Flutter engineering team as well at Google. Uh, so he's going to talk about some interesting topic today. Um, and let's see what you have to learn from me. And then please do keep your questions coming in. We'll be taking uh, the questions towards the end. And German from uh, Flutter Singapore team will be helping us out to clarify those questions. So Shehao, without taking much time, let me share your screen. Awesome, and we'll see you, see all of you in a bit after she how is done. Nice, cool. All right, guys, as Shafras has um, introduced, my name is she how and I work on the Flutter team in the Bay Area, California. However, I'm currently working out of Taiwan, uh, which is why I'm able to give this talk at this time because it's currently 3 a.m. in California. Um, I'm also happy to be able to represent Southeast Asia on the Flutter team. 
I grew up in Malaysia and then went to the US to further my education and then stayed on later to work for Google. Um, I've been on the Flutter team at Google for a, a little over two years now. And recently I've been mostly working on the localizations tool and also on state restoration. Um, however, I'm starting to shift gears these days to start working on the new menu system, particularly to support desktop, as well as continue work with autocomplete, which is the main widget I'll be discussing during my talk today. Um, this is my first time giving a presentation like this, so bear with me. I'm a little bit nervous, but I'm happy to have this opportunity to talk and share about the work I do for the team. All right, so why talk about autocomplete? I thought a little, I thought quite long and hard about what I wanted to talk about, and um, you know, I didn't want to talk too much about Flutter two because I knew I know that most of the details on it were shared on the internet. There are a lot of blog posts, a lot of YouTube videos, so like any little detail that you're looking for is probably already on the internet. And you know, there's probably like um, API docs and um, um, at Code Labs to share more about every little thing that you're uh, that you want to um, look into. And I also didn't want to get too technical since I I'm not sure every person would be very interested in the implement de implementation details of any particular widget. So I decided to talk about something a little more personal um, and the process of how our team starts scoping out work for the autocomplete widget. Um, the reason for that being, I think that. Um, the listeners here can learn a lot about how the Flutter team prioritizes and picks up work for issues and new features. And you know, you can also learn how to actively design and participate in providing feedback for certain features. Um, from there, the hope is that you know you guys could help us help you. Um, one of the cool things about working in open source is that we try to be as open as possible with all of our processes, whether it's like designing new features or like working on existing bugs, or you know, just like any part of the process. Um, yeah, and also, um, just a disclaimer, like this talk kind of assumes that everyone here has a basic understanding of Flutter. Um, but if you don't, that's totally fine as well. And um, you know, we'll be happy to take questions at the end of the talk. Um, let's see. Yeah, so how Autocomplete started. So this all started with an event called Flutter Interact back in 2019. So I had the privilege of attending this event, um, and it was held in New York. Um, it was our event basically to showcase the latest on Flutter and you know how we focused on the ability to break um, to create great UI experiences across multiple devices. So as a volunteer there, basically I spend most of the time talking to attendees about, you know, showing them some sample Flutter apps, um, talking to them about the work I do, and trying to answer questions the best I can. Um, at the event, I happened to run into Hillel, who's mentioned in this slide. He's a Google developer expert um, for Flutter, and he's also the co-founder of Invoice Ninja. Uh, Invoice Ninja is basically an invoicing app for freelancers and businesses, and I think that their client web app is um, made with Flutter. And uh, back then, Flutter was still in beta, and so he was basically building fl uh, a Flutter web app using the master branch in Flutter. Um, you know, when I was there at the event, he mentioned to me like, "Hey, um, Shihao, you know, I have a lot of trouble finding a good out-of-the-box solution, particularly for autocomplete." And so, you know, you might ask, "What is autocomplete?" Um, it's basically a normal text input enhanced by like a panel of suggested options. So if you look at this slide, like there's a GIF of basically a, a text field. And as you type words into the text field, it brings up a drop down menu. And so, you know, um, this wasn't supported like really well on Flutter. And so what Hillel was doing, for example, was he was using a third party package. I think he, I think it was type ahead. And he said that it lacked functionality for web and desktop, particularly around keyboard navigation. And that's really important for him, right? Because at the time, um, I mean, not at the time, but even now, like it's still a Flutter web app and he really needs that. Um, so the first thing I did for him was I filed a GitHub issue. Um, basically, if you like a more detailed um, description of how GitHub, I mean, sorry, of how Flutter prioritizes um, issues, go on GitHub and um, look at our wiki, but I'll talk about some core important aspects to our process. So one of the examples is we look at the severity of the issue. For example, if um, the break if the build is breaking or we're, like there's like a bug that blocks a key customer, that tends to be the highest priority. But one other thing we pay attention to is the number of thumbs ups there are on the GitHub issue itself. So if, for example, if you look at the slide right now, the issue I posted within the matter of like I think one or two weeks got a lot of thumbs ups. So like I think the first week I remember seeing like thirty or forty, and so we knew that. Um, it was a, a feature that our users were really interested in. So the first thing that we usually do after like deciding a, a, um, a feature is important is we start writing 
uh, a design doc. And this is something we tend to do with more complex features. So a quick summary of what a design doc is. Um, they are basically how any Flutter contributor shares their thought process on you know, possible paths moving forward with a new feature for a code migration or as a means to get feedback from the community about any um, new feature that you might want to create for Flutter. Um, anybody interested in creating, fixing, or updating a complex feature you know, is welcome to, resign, um, to write a design document, not just, like, um, um, Flutter, uh, not just the Flutter team. Um, one of the cool things that we do, uh, what, sorry, one of the cool things about the work we do at Flutter is that you know, you can, even if you don't write a design doc, you can actively engage as well. So that's kind of how we co continue to incorporate feedback from Hillel and other members of the team. They basically wrote comments on the GitHub issue. They made comments on the design doc. And um, we basically incorporated that feedback on an iterative basis. Um, in the case of autocomplete, um, Justin, who is one of my teammates, he took the lead with working on this feature. And he put a ton of input on the auto into autocomplete's design document. Um, he is basically our resident expert in the Flutter's um, in Flutter's text editing system. And that's perfect because autocomplete is basically a fan, like uh, you can consider it kind of a fancier text field. So um, some of the key design discussions uh, we had around the widget was extensibility, flexibility, and accessibility. So for extensibility, we wanted to make sure that the widget can be extended upon by users to create their own UI for autocomplete. Um, so what that means is like, for example, we made a, a version of autocomplete called raw autocomplete. And basically, um, what this is, is it's um, the widget library version of this widget. And it basically allows users to extend the autocomplete functionality with their own custom UI. And so on the other hand, we also um, offer a material style version of autocomplete, which, is, which basically extends on this raw autocomplete widget. And this is pretty much the out of the box recommendation for the material design systems autocomplete component. Um, one of the nice things about doing this is uh, with the raw version that uh, of the autocomplete, um, it allows us to kind of adapt as needed. You know, like material and the, the material and Cupertino widgets are um, sorry, the material and Cupertino libraries are always like um, evolving. So, for example, like you, you know, iOS widgets are always like changing. Like you know, from I, iOS version to iOS version, they might like UI might change ever so slightly, and so by making the code more modular, it allows us to adapt quickly to these changes every year. Um, it also helps us look ahead with supporting design systems in our other newer supported flat platforms. So for example, now that we support desktop, you know, we might need to support a design system for uh, Windows, for Linux, and for Mac OS. Um, on the second point of flexibility, uh, we want to also make sure we support what we call a split UI API. So if you look at this um, GIF on the slide, basically what that is is um, instead of having a dropdown that contains all the possible options you can select, it shows up in the body of the application. So when you see the list show up right now, like that's basically not, a, uh, it's not in an overlay that's actually um, painting itself onto the body of the app. Um, so examples for how to do this is in the API documentation, if you're curious. Um, and if it isn't, please file an issue. Um, but yeah, ba this basically allows the user to customize the results for autocomplete shown based on the value in the text field. And the third point is accessibility. And this, you could argue, is the most important one, especially for Hillel. He wanted to handle, he wanted our widget to be able to handle um, keyboard navigation, particularly on web and desktop. So we definitely want to get this one right. So, you know, after a few months, a few thousand lines of code, and a few rounds of code reviews later, um, we have functionality for autocomplete merge into Flutter. And it's actually already available on Flutter 2. Um, the code review process involved multiple members of the team and multiple rounds of review, as well as going back to the design doc um, you know, to update terminology whenever we needed to and incorporate new ideas to the existing design when um, our team members had ideas. Um, I also want to go over some technical bits. I don't want to go into too much detail because you know, I know when I look at large blocks of code, I start to like zone out. Um, I wanted to emphasize you know, how composition played a huge part in creating the autocomplete material widget. Um, since Flutter is all about composition, what that means is the UI for autocomplete itself is actually based on a lot of already implemented lower level widgets. Um, for example, um, the material autocomplete options UI is basically just a list view with nested inkwells and text widgets. Another example is the text field, the autocomplete text field itself is basically a 
text field widget within the autocomplete widget. So if you look at the circle, the red circle in the slide deck, you'll see that the build function of the autocomplete field um, widget basically builds a text form field and kind of like comment, like customizes it a little bit. You know, of course, there's a lot of code in the widget for autocomplete functionality in itself. But in terms of the UI, a lot of it is already present in existing widgets. And you know, if you're planning on um, building your own third third party Flutter package or a Flutter application, you can just extend on existing widgets really easily, including the autocomplete widget. So here's some quick sample code for how to use the autocomplete widget. So um, I just want to go over like a really quick example of like how to use the autocomplete widget. Um, in the I think in the simplest um, possible way, you only need to define two parameters. So the first parameter is options builder. And that basically just decides what suggestions you want to provide to the user depending on what's already in the text field. So in this case, um, we have a list of strings um, in K options. It's just a list of strings of the names of Southeast Asian countries. And based on the value in the text field, um, as long as the list of countries contain that substring, it's going to show into the options, the list of options. Um, the second parameter is on selected, and it's just basically a callback that gets called anytime a listed option is selected. And all it does is it prints the message. So what's next? So what this means is like um, the autocomplete uh, widget is not done. There's a lot of additional um, features we want to include and incorporate. So so far, Hillel seems happy with like what we put forward, and hopefully we'll continue to deliver as we add more functionality to autocomplete. Um, I've been busy with other projects myself, so I haven't had a chance to contribute directly to autocomplete except for like um, providing feedback in the design doc and providing code reviews for Justin. But I'm going to get back into it soon. And the first thing I'm going to work on is um, keyboard support with Justin. Um, there are other features that were discussed in the design doc, like handling async. Um, that would be great follow-up features for the widget. And you know, if you're still interested in providing feedback or reporting a bug with the autocomplete widget as it is now, go on GitHub and file an issue or, you know, Go to the design doc and um, say something over there. And I also want to um, point out that you know contributions to Flutter are like very welcome. Like you know, I hope that walking through the autocomplete, um, uh, you know, the process for how autocomplete came to be was very helpful with understanding how Flutter issues are scoped, designed, and worked on by the team. You know, every major every major Flutter feature goes through basically the same process. We try to be as open as possible with everything. Um, so feel free to contribute wherever and participate wherever you want. Um, you know, you could just contribute um, reproducible bug samples, um, submit PRs. Don't hesitate to uh, contribute to any of the features of the framework that you're like particularly interested in. Um, you can hop onto GitHub and look at our wiki for more information and suggestions for how you can do that as well. Um, you know, we have a few very prolific open source contributors. And you know they're very actively adding features and fixing bugs. And you know I found it very fun to like work with them as well because I find that um, not only am I able to like teach some stuff to um, open source contributors, but I also always learn something new with, from them along the way. Um, so yeah, um, thank you all for tuning into my talk and to this event. I just want to also say a quick thank you to Neil Neil on the Flutter DevRel team for sharing this opportunity with me. I'm so happy I can like um, speak and share with you guys. Also want to thank Shavraz and the rest of the team that put together this event. And last but not least, also thank Justin and Hans and everyone else who worked on the autocomplete project over the last few months. Um, I'll be available later for the Q&A, as mentioned before, um, to talk about the presentation or Flutter in general. Um, thank you, guys. And I hope you guys enjoy the rest of this event. All right. Thank you, Shihao. Uh, that was a very interesting topic and then showcased how um, these features get popped up and then picked up as well. Uh, thank you for sharing uh, a live um, sort of uh, engagement that you had and then how things have progressed so far. Thank you for that. Um, so Shihao, if you have um, um, like thoughts about the presentation and then if you have any questions that you want to ask from Shihao, please do leave it in the comment section. We'll be picking those up towards the end of the event. Uh, please to uh, stay tuned until that. So Shihao, let me put you to the backstage and uh, we'll get the other speaker in to uh, go ahead with the uh, other presentation that we have. So who is the speaker that we're going to invite Shihao? I think it's going to be, is it Anga or Haris? I'm actually not sure. Yeah, we're going to invite Haris. And Haris is very well known here in uh, Singapore. 
Harish is also a Google developer expert as well. So let's invite Harish to the screen. Hello. Hey, hey, Harish. Thanks for joining with us today. Um, and we had a very interesting time um, as well preparing for this event. And it was fun because of the quiz, which is upcoming. Uh, we'll, we'll wait for that for more information. Um, so uh, thank you, Shihao. Thank you for your time. So let me put you on the backstage and uh, let me um, get Harish's presentation up as well. Thank you, Shihao. Awesome. All right. Thanks uh, for that. OK, let me share your presentation, Harish. Cool. All right. Three things Flutter 2.0 updates you. Updates you should know. Awesome. Yep. I'm like super excited for this presentation as well. OK, over to you, Harris. All right. Thank you, Shafras. And thank you guys for joining this live stream. So I'm going to talk about three things that you should know from the Flutter 2.0 updates. So for those who haven't watched the Flutter Engage event, I got you. All right. So the three Flutter updates you should know is basically one, it, two, is and three amazing yes <laughs> no i'm just kidding so jokes aside the three things i want to share today is actually not it is amazing but uh the most like popular thing that a lot of people are talking about it's stable flutter web the second one is new flutter dev tools and the third one is migration to now safe or now safety all right so let's get started with the first one let's uh talk about the stable Flutter web. So there are probably three questions you might ask about stable Flutter web. So I'm going to briefly run through on what this uh, stable Flutter web or this section is about because uh, Anga, my next speak, uh, the next speaker will probably have more things to share with you. So this will be very brief. So I'm going to share with you the, the three questions. What is stable? What is suited for Flutter web? And what is not suited for Flutter web? So let me start with the first one. What is stable? So inside the Flutter uh, develop the Flutter uh, GitHub channels, right? There are four channels, or you could say four GitHub branches. So the first one is master, and I'm going to describe you the different channels in emojis because I think a lot of us are so in tune what mm. emojis are. So for master, we'll probably have this emoji. Why? Because Master, it's where there's a lot of things that is, um, it's experimental. So a lot of things can be breaking. Um, a lot of things can not work here and there, but it's the most updated. So you're pretty shocked on what things there are to come and what things can also break. So if you want to be at the tip and the frontier of the new Flutter tech, then I will highly recommend you to go to the master. The second channel, which is a little bit uh, less riskier, it's called beta. So beta, it will be the less uh, uh, thing that I, th uh, the less, uh, I would say, uh, up to date. But I guess there's a lot more tests that has been run in the beta channel as such. And this is where you, you'll be a little bit surprised. But at the same time, it is still a bit more stable than the master channel. And then the third one where I usually go to, which is the dev channel. So dev is short form for developer channel. And this basically has a few bugs here and there, but not a lot to the point that, you know, um, you have to, uh, you know, like be shocked. But you'll be happy to see there are things, there are new things here and there. So for me, I love to go to the dev channel because it's not too breaking and not too new in a sense. But yeah, that's where I usually go to. But I think for most of us who creates production uh, level apps, right? I will highly recommend you to go to stable. So stable is where everything should be fine. If there were to be like a very like a major bug, then I think the Flutter developer team will have a hot fix uh, in the stable just to like mend out all of the important bugs that's in the stable channel. But most of the time, uh, there won't be a lot of like breaking bug, breaking changes or bugs that is uh, present. So when we say Flutter Web becomes stable, what it means is that 
it has gone through so many iterations, so many channels, and so many users from people who are in beta, dev, dev and master to the point that it, we are confident or the Flutter team is confident that they will push, like for example, Flutter web to stable. So that's what stable means. So the second uh, question that you might have is what's suitable for Flutter web? So um, during the Flutter and Gig, uh, I think Team Sniff and I think the people in the Flutter Web uh, team or the people who are working in the Flutter Web uh, side, they say that Flutter Web is not really a web framework per se, but more towards an extension of your Flutter apps. So that's where you can, you know, create progressive web apps. And people, if you don't know what's progressive web apps, it's basically uh, apps that you can download from the internet. So you can download it from uh, a web browser or you can download it from your apps and then you and it can work as as well or even better than a native app but I think the native app is still better because there's certain functionalities that a native app can actually work on but for Flutter web progressive web app is one thing that uh, uh, that is uh, meant uh, to be built for I guess in a sense then second is single page application. So those web applications that, for example, the more popular one is called Rive. So Rive is an application where you can create animations that is small and fast and uh, performant. So Flutter has this very great rendering engine that allows you to make very fast and interactive performant uh, web applications. So single page application is, I believe also, and uh, what the Flutter team and even in the documentation state that it's uh, it's meant to be. And then last one uh, it is also to extend existing mobile applications. So for example, you have a Flutter app and then you want to extend it to the web platform. You can use mobile uh, you can you can you know convert it into a mobile app that runs on the website or you can make it even a PWA because yeah, Flutter has the feature of one code base and then you can just run it through uh, different platforms. Maybe you have to put a little bit of different configurations, but there's not a lot for it to be hard for you to move on to the web. So these are the three things um, that uh, what Flutter web is suited for. But I think a lot of people are talking about what Flutter web should be or what it is not suited to be. So Flutter Web is not really suited for text-rich, flow-based static content. What do I mean by this? So examples are like landing pages or like blog articles. Because of Flutter Web, the rendering engine that it has is very fast. So rich interactive apps like Rive, where you have, you know, uh, certain applications that you need to, you know, make a, a shape and then enlarge it or make it smaller. Flutter engine really works very well. Even for a game, it is pretty performant. But if you want to have static websites, like landing pages and blog articles, I don't think it is what Flutter web is meant to be. But you can definitely build landing pages and blog articles with Flutter web. But if there is an alternative, I would write, highly recommend you to do it uh, to do the alternative. You can use web builders or even normal HTML, CSS. Because it is like Flutter Web has potential to be a performant, rich, interactive uh, framework, but you use it for not what it's meant to be. But if you still want to use it, there is no, nobody is going to stop you. You can do it as well. So these are the things that I think what uh, I want to talk about for the Flutter Web. All right, so I'm going to move on to the next one, which is the new Flutter Dev to Tools. So... I'm going to give you a little demo if I can make it work because somehow I tried it, but I'm going to run it on Chrome. So this DevTools is basically something that you probably use when you're creating your Flutter apps. And then there are new DevTools that I'm going to showcase, which is basically how you are going to debug uh, overflown, overflowed uh, widgets. So for example, widgets that suddenly extends a lot and such. So I wanted to show you in Android emulator, but that's fine. So I have a simple side project app where it's called Flutter Challenges. It's a quiz app. 
So that's why I'm also hosting the quiz later on. So it is pretty simple. You have a quiz app and then you go to the quiz app and such. And then after that, you, for example, um, click on it, submit, and then you want to know what's the explanation. And then, oh, okay. So basically, how you can go to the DevTools is to click uh, Command Shift P and then you can open this uh, uh, command called Open Dev Tools. So they have a lot of uh, specific uh, different um, tools that you can use. So if you really want, you can use Open Dev Tools in, a, in its own separate web browser. That's where you can get the full functionality of the Dev Tools. So the first thing that I want to showcase is this thing called the Invert Oversized Image. So let me zoom in for you guys. Okay, so if I were to hover over this, it says enable oversized images. So for myself, I'm pretty lazy. I don't really have the time to, you know, see which images are taking a lot of space. So if I were to click on this, if you were to see what changed over here, you could see that my images on this explanation tab suddenly, uh, what do you call it, flipped. This is because it is oversized and it takes a lot of space. And if I were to go back over here, you could see all of my images are now flipped. That means that I have images that's pretty big, even though, uh, and it also showcased in my debug console so far. Okay, all right. So you could see how much space I've used for a simple image, which is only 150, but I'm using an image uh, aspect ratio of like 1080 to 1080. And the cool thing is that it tells you how much of space you are wasting to render a simple small image. 5,957 kilobytes, that's five megabytes. And I don't think that it's a small size, five megabytes is pretty huge. So that gives an idea on like, okay, I should probably optimize my images to something smaller so that for a user who does not have a good internet connection, then it will take a long time for read to load and then it might give a bad user experience and they might, you know, delete my app, which I don't want to or none of us want to, right? So that's where this uh, tool is really helpful. So at the same time, I want to also do an image uh, overflow. So for this is called the bottom exp explanation bottom sheet. Okay, so what I will do is then I will make a, I will make this image overflow by just putting a simple uh, okay, let me not flip this as well. Okay, so if I were to go to the explanation, so if I submit and if I show the explanation, typically you will see an overflow. And I think most of us who have used Flutter have seen this uh, yellow and black, uh, which is pretty ugly. So the thing is, it's, uh, it's something that we don't like to see every time when we, you know, create our, our apps. So it should actually show uh, a, a, an error. It doesn't show. Okay, why is that so? So maybe it's running on web. That's why it's not being shown. Let me try again. So if I were to open the DevTools again and then go to the widget inspector page, then let's see if it's loading correctly. So what, what I wanted to show is basically if there was an overflown um, or an image or widget that is uh, having this overflown thing, it will show exactly where you are doing it wrongly. So sorry for this, but it doesn't show for some reason, but that's fine. So um, yeah, so basically I need to it will pop up a, a window here that says show uh, the widget that is supposed to overflow, but that's fine. So when you click on the window, it will redirect me exactly to what uh, where the widget is so that I can actually do the correction. So for this, basically in a row, if I were to put an image that's very large, it will expand as much as possible. Let me try to open the DevTools again in my web browser. Let's see if it works. All right. So, but trust me, the DevTools is pretty cool. 
Right, so it doesn't really load that much, but that's fine. So in order for me to uh, correct this overflown uh, image, right, what I need to do is make it uh, into a flexible widget. So flexible widget will actually make it constrained to its uh, space that it has. So if I were to save this, for web, it will just refresh the whole thing. So let me hot refresh this thing. Okay, let's see if it works. So it should work and... Okay, doesn't. Okay, never mind. So, <laughs> yeah. So let's take it that it works. And then, yeah, that's how you solve this. But that's fine. So uh, I'm going to move on to the next one because I think I don't have a lot of time. So the next one is I want to migrate my current project to now safety. So I think this is something that is pretty important for a lot of us. We have existing projects that we we are still working on. And then there is new this new feature where you can make your project uh, into a now safe or make it safer for you. So there are two situations that you will go through, which is the first one, ideal migration. So if you have... Uh, Basically, what we all want is to have an ideal mig migration where we don't have any errors and such. But second one, probably I will give you a realistic migration where uh, you will see the different uh, obstacles they have to go through in order for you to migrate to now safety. So let me focus on the first one, I the ideal migration. So the ideal migration goes something like this. You want to first update your packages to now safe. So then you probably have all of the packages to have all the now save version. So for example, you have a package that's a provider package and it's now save. Then another uh, package, uh, maybe uh, URL launcher is also now save. Great. So you have two or you have all of the packages to have now save version. And then you can migrate your project to, uh, to be now safe as well. And then your project, for some reason, have no errors after you migrate to now save. So we all know that this is usually not the case because uh, I think we programmers has faced so many errors to the point that nothing will go through smoothly as what we intend to. So I'm going to go through what exactly will go through if you want to uh, migrate to null safety. So advantages to go to null safe is that you have less errors and it's going to make your code uh, smaller and smaller code usually uh, faster code as well. and But at the same time, if you want to migrate to now safe as well, there are, there are certain priorities as a developer you want to focus on. Sometimes you have features that you want to create and then you don't have time to migrate as well. So that's when uh, incremental migration comes in where you just want to migrate certain parts of your files so that you can also work on the things that's on your list of uh, to-dos, right? So... Uh, but before you want to migrate, first of all, you must check whether your packages are now safe. So we will find out that some packages are not now safe. So let me go to my simple uh, project over here. And then let's go to the terminal. Okay. So in order for me to... Oh, no, now save. Do, 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 migrate. So a simple... Um, what, what do you call this? Command line... Um, Command, sorry, command is dot pub upgrade dash dash null safety. Then if you were to press enter, it will actually check through all your dependencies to see whether they are null safe. So then you could see that there are a couple of uh, of uh, these uh, packages that can be null safe as well. So if you were to run this uh, dot pub upgrade dot dash dash null safety it actually upgrades for you. So it's supposed to be an yes, yeah. So uh, but before that, uh, you want to see whether your uh, packages are outdated. So you can run this dot pub outdated dash dash mode null safety. But either way, it's a uh, it's pretty simple and it it does all the work for you, which is pretty great. So I have an ideal case where I don't have uh, uh, some uh, packages that are not null safe. But if you don't have any packages that are not null safe, even one of them, then don't migrate because we need all of the packages to be null safe in order for our Flutter project to be null safe as well. So the next part is 
um, we want to have incremental migration as well. So first migrate the independent files. That means uh, you the independent files are files that doesn't depend on each other. For example, your utility dot dart, you know. So like uh, for example, is now you have a function that is called is now to check an object whether it's a null, right? So you will probably have to convert this file into its uh, uh you have to convert this file into uh null save. So simply in order for you to do that, what we can do is we can type in dot migrate. So it will then analyze our projects and see whether we are eligible to be uh, migrated into the now safety. So this actually checks uh, your dependencies as well to see whether you have all of your dependencies to be now safe. So I've already converted all of my packages to be now safe. And once we are eligible, then you have you don't have a success message, but you have this link that you can go to in order for you to go uh, and see this migration tool. So this migration tool is pretty cool where it actually checks all of your files and actually helps you migrate. So for example, like I say, uh, you probably have a utility file that you know allows that doesn't really depend on other files. For example, I have this uh, colors file where I just have my own set of colors. So you probably have to uh, migrate this uh, what they call this color, uh, this utility file. Then you can just uncheck all of the boxes that you don't want to migrate first. So let me go to my colors and then you can just apply migration and then um, you press OK. And then if you were to go back to your dot or your Flutter project, it actually migrate the, the file, uh, the single file that you chosen but at the same time, I mean, before that, you you before you do any migration. Sorry, I forgot uh, to tell you. But you have to also commit your code because it actually changes the files as well. It, for all of your other files, so with incremental change with the incremental uh, changes strategy for you to you know uh, bit by uh, migrate bit by bit, it actually gives. Uh, this uh, entry point, what do you call this, uh, the dot version entry point, so that uh, when you want to run a mixed version, so you have a non-null save files and null save files combined, then you'll probably have to use, uh, you have to run the Flutter project in a mixed version uh, for your projects. So you can run non-null stuff with non-null uh, files and null stuff as well. So for the non-null files, you will be generated this simple line of code where it just says, okay, this file is Dart 2.9, which is the before uh, the non-null, see if I'm not wrong. Yep. Okay. So once that's done, let me go back to my slides. The next thing is um, once you have uh, made all the migrations for, we call this a leaf library, but I would say independent files. The next thing is we want, uh, let me, let not go down. Okay. Why is that? So, right. This, okay. So the next thing is, it doesn't go down. Okay. So the next thing is you want your files to, you want to upgrade uh, your upgrade. Okay, something is wrong over here. I don't know what is happening. Okay, so the next thing is you need to basically have your different files as well to be migrated as well. Okay, there is something wrong with my deck. Uh, okay, so after you have migrated your independent files, the next thing is to migrate your files that is dependent on the uh, independent files. That means like, for example, you have a file that, for example, have, uh, okay, I have the slides, don't worry. I got, I got me, I got me. Okay. Okay, so once you have done that, the next thing is to have uh, migrate your libraries that directly depend on the leaf libraries or the independent files. So what it looks like is that uh, you have 
file C that depends on file A and B. So file A and B has already migrated to null safety. Now file C is able to migrate it as well. Then uh, after that, the last one will be you will migrate the libraries or the files that have the most intra-package dependencies. So simply like you have a file, C, a file D that depends on a file C. So then you will have to, you know, migrate after that as well. But this is just a simple case. Probably file D has another file that it depends and it's interweb and such. So with the migration tool, I think it's pretty uh, easy for you to migrate as well. So if you were to have a mixed uh, version where you have null files with non-null files to be combined and you want to run it as well because you want to do incremental migration, then this is the command that you do where if it's a Dart library, you can run Dart uh, no sound, null safety run, or you can, for a Flutter project, then you can run Flutter run dash dash no sound, null safety. So that's about it. Uh, yeah, so I want to thank you guys for <laughs> uh, for uh, and, uh, listening, even though there was a lot of things that goes wrong. But that's about it for today. So the three things in summary is uh, the first one, the Flutter web stable. The second one is basically uh, the new dev tools that I did not manage to show you the second half, which is the uh, debugging of the overflowed widgets and, or the widget inspector. And lastly, how to migrate your now save. So yeah, if you have any questions about all these three subjects or even for Flutter and Gage, please do uh, put in the YouTube comments as well so that uh, we can answer for that. All right. So that's about it. Thank you, guys. All right. Awesome. Thanks, Saris. Thanks for that uh, amazing presentation. And I think in Q&A as well, uh, live Q&A, there are like really good comments and then a couple of questions as well, which we can take uh, towards the end of the program. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, so, Haris, out of these three announcements, which one is your favorite? Out of these three, favorite? Ah... Uh... I would actually my favorite is the dev tools. Yeah, but I didn't manage to show uh how to debug an overflown widget. But that's okay. I think you guys probably will see that pop out once you've seen those overflown errors. But yep. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. So I think um along with Haris, we are going to invite another speaker of ours, is uh Anga who's joining Hello. with us today. Uh, so Anga, similar to Haris, he's also a Google developer expert on Flutter and he's based out of Indonesia. And he has some interesting topic as well uh, to present today to us. Um, so um, Haris and myself gonna go back into the backstage and we are gonna leave Anga with his presentation. So let me bring his presentation up. All right, awesome. So Anga, over to you. All right. Thank you, Shabras. Thank you, Harris, and Shihao as well for the great presentation uh, about Flutter Engage last week and then, you know, how to contribute to Flutter uh, open source environment, which is really great, I think, uh, especially at least in Indonesia. I didn't see uh, that movement that much. So uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, if you're from Southeast Asia, my name is Angga Duerifandi. You can call me Angga. Uh, I'm a mobile developer at Rock.so. I'm also a GDE uh, for Flutter at Indonesia. And today I'm going to talk about uh, the Flutter web development ret retrospective. Basically, uh, I'm just trying to uh, reiterate to what I've been through this couple of months uh, in developing uh, Flutter web professional projects. Uh, so this is my background. Uh, like I said, uh, I work at Rock.so, a startup company, and then I'm also a Google developer expert uh, in Flutter. I occasionally write uh, open source code in my GitHub. Uh, you can see it there. Uh, I also write in my Medium. Uh, that is there as well. Uh, also, if you have any questions, uh, probably about Flutter uh, or say any general development inquiries, uh, you can uh, email me at my email right below. So first, let's uh, go through the history of Flutter Web. Uh, when, when is the first time Flutter Web is uh, developed? 
Exactly. So this is the first uh, trace uh, that I can get. Uh, it's around uh, December 5th, 2018. Probably around uh, the first announcement of Flutter uh, 1.0. Uh, it's actually have a different name. Back then it, it was called Hummingbird. Uh, it was written, uh, there, there's an article by Yegor Yubanov, which is uh, a software engineer at Google and Flutter team as well, I think. So basically this Hummingbird is trying to port the Flutter functionality, which is already stable at the moment for Android and iOS. And then basically the Google team is trying to move uh, or port them to web, uh, Chrome OS, and then desktop as well. Uh, back then, the, n the name of the project is called Hummingbird. And then we move uh, to Google I.O. Uh, 2019. <coughs> mm, exactly, it's May uh, 2019. Uh, I think the uh, there's two Emily uh, who is inside the Google Flutter team uh, are showcasing uh, the Flutter for Web Technical Preview. Uh, they are showing this uh, project in the right hand side uh, which is uh, really cool I think uh, web uh, built using uh, Flutter uh, for web it's not that uh, great I think at the time uh, there's a lot of bugs uh, especially because this is like the first uh, technical preview right uh, a lot of bugs uh, a lot of in incompatibilities and then the packages uh, a lot of packages are not supported yet in the uh, Flutter for web because I think, I think mostly people are starting to move uh, to Flutter for Android and iOS uh, functionality, not for web. And then we move again uh, to uh, December 2019, around seven months uh, from the technical preview. Uh, Mariam, uh, which is the product manager of Flutter uh, in, the Google, in the Google Flutter team, uh, are writing uh, an article about uh, web support, which is going to beta. Uh, so it uh, rise, it rises uh, one level from technical preview to beta. Uh, I think a lot of improvements here and there. Uh, I also tried it uh, at least once uh, for, you know, uh, just for the sake of exploring. And then I would say it's not that great yet. Uh, still a lot of uh, stuttering that I will show as well in the next coming slides. Uh, but yeah, I think uh, a lot of improvements already. And then next is last week uh, which is march uh, 20 and 21 around three years or probably two and a half years uh, from its first announcement to the public uh, flutter web is uh, officially available in stable uh, which i think uh, we can translate it as uh, it's ready for production basically more or less but is it uh, actually ready or you know uh, did i consider it to be uh, production ready what is the uh, positive uh, sides of Flutter Web? Uh, what is the negative sides? I will uh, go through it in the coming slides. So first, uh, let's go through the architecture of Flutter Web. Uh, if you didn't know, uh, there's actually already a uh, Angular Dart. Uh, it's been around a while. I think even before the Flutter 1.0, it's pretty uh, popular as well. Uh, the block, uh, the f I think the first block presentation also uh, was based on the idea of sharing the code uh, between the angular dart uh, which is written using dart and then flutter which is uh, written using dart as well for uh, mobile app uh, so basically it's been around for a while and then flutter web is a little bit different i would say uh, from angular dart uh, probably in a way that uh, its code is being written and then the architecture as well basically flutter web is using dart uh, to js uh, bridge which uh, is basically you know uh, stating for its name uh, it's a bridge between dart to js so the flutter frame framework itself was written fully in dart uh, everything is in dart uh, it's been used for i think platforms mobile and then web and then desktop as well and then embedded as well i think and then the uh, site which is talking to the browser which is translating our Dart code to the uh, browser, to the uh, web form, uh, is the bottom side, which is uh, on the orange. So currently, uh, the I think the first time uh, it's been around Flutter Web is 
converting the dark code into a standard HTML and CSS, uh, which is used to you know render the components, uh, the web itself. But uh, later on, uh, there's a uh, there's a slight change change or improvements. Uh, we'll talk about it in the next slides as well. So what is the latest Flutter web updates from from last week's uh, engage? The first one is uh, performance. This is always have been I think the like uh, people are always trying to compare this uh, performance of Flutter web to other frameworks, say React or Vue or Svelte, uh, which is uh, really you know upcoming uh, web framework, right? Uh, so they added uh, another render previously it was uh, rendered into an HTML but, but they add another render which is kind of a skit uh, I think it's been around on uh, the master branch as well for a while uh, at least I've been using it for a while uh, so basically uh, now developer have uh, the flexibility to use uh, one of these two renders uh, so what is the difference so the HTML render is uh, basically will uh, result to uh, much, much smaller code. But probably uh, in terms of performance, it's not that good. Uh, you'll see a lot of stuttering. Uh, but this will be used mostly, uh, at least uh, from the out of the box uh, solution. It will be used uh, if the Flutter web projects uh, is, is being opened in a mobile browser. I think uh, we can say that uh, probably the flutter team uh, are trying to make the experience uh, at least the loading experience for customers uh, much much uh, better uh, so that uh, you know usually you know how usually mobile is a little bit slower uh, than desktop because desktop we have like uh, dedicated wi-fi probably or probably even connected to uh, lan cable uh, which is really really fast probably compared to uh, our mobile internet uh, so yeah, uh, that's the idea. And then uh, for desktop, uh, we'll use Canvas Kit, uh, which is uh, in terms of size, uh, much, much bigger. We'll see in the coming slides as well. But uh, in terms of performance, it's much, much better as well. Uh, definitely less stuttering, as, at least as far as I can tell, uh, compared to the HTML. So the default is uh, whenever you build a Flutter web project, uh, the Flutter engine uh, will smartly decide uh, whether to use HTML render or Canvas Kit based on the platform uh, the user is opening your web uh, project from, right? But we actually can uh, decide ourselves if uh, if our if we want to uh, only use HTML, let's say, uh, for much much smaller uh, loading time. Or probably if we want to use Canvas Kit uh, for much better performance. So basically, this is uh, I think the biggest improvement from uh, Flutter Web last week. And then there's also, <coughs> sorry, uh, there's also web specific features uh, improvement. First is uh, now we have control over URL based navigation. You can see if you are pretty familiar with Flutter Web previously, there was there is there is always a hashtag at the end of the URL. Uh, in your Flutter web projects, now you can basically control all of that. If you want to change the URL, uh, you can do that as well. And then next thing is the text rendering. Uh, I think it it has been uh, uh, there's there has been a lot of improvements uh, on the text rendering uh, on Flutter web since its beginning. Uh, probably because uh, uh, I'm not going to go through the details uh, but the text rendering is one point where uh, I think the Flutter web is constantly uh, improving. I think Harris also uh, mentioned it in his uh, slides. And then next is, uh, this is a pretty good one as well, a production use uh, which is a pretty complicated one I, I would say uh, which is uh, the website is code.irobot.com you can open it uh, on your browser uh, it's written totally in the uh, from the Flutter web. Uh, you can see the I think the use case itself, the animations, uh, and then playing sounds, and then the UI itself, responsiveness, is uh, super uh, complex. I would say uh, probably this is uh, I think uh, at least for me uh, when I saw this uh, written using Flutter web, uh, I'm I be more much much more confident in using Flutter web for my professional projects. 
because basically if you see that uh, this sort of a complex website is being done using flutter web uh, then probably your uh, yours is which probably much much more simpler than this uh, probably will be will be uh, can be done uh, in flutter web as well that's the idea at least and then next thing is the plugin support uh, definitely this is uh, one thing that is being considered by the uh, flutter developer all over the world as well uh, in terms of you know using flutter web or not uh, for their professional projects at least for the official package i think there's eight or nine uh in in my slide uh this is the official package uh which is uh some 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 of those packages i think uh, are pretty integral to our projects as well like google maps Mo most probably i think like majority of the people will will reuse this at, at least i use it uh for my personal and professional project in flutter web and it's good to see uh, that this uh, plugin supported uh, finally by the uh, flutter community or team and then next goes to my experience with uh, flutter web so this is my first uh, professional project and then i uh, basically uh, strike through it uh, what does it mean uh, so basically this is a website uh, the website is already done as well you can see it right here uh, it's just uh, like a company website a user can a user can uh, add form add their data and then submit it uh, basically it's as simple as that uh, I think a lot of uh, a lot of companies have this uh, website uh, so at first I'm trying to uh, write this or develop this using flutter web uh, it's in May 2020 and then probably uh, around like 10 15 percent uh, when I'm developing this larger page right here uh, and then developing the, the next one uh, I faced uh, a dilemma basically uh, basically I use this uh, as my means to probably if it's good uh, this is uh, some kind of my bet right if it's good uh, then oh definitely this will be heaven right because I wrote flutter in my daily basis and then if I can write a web project uh, with flutter as well then that'll be heaven for me i think and then uh, i think like 10 15 percent through this uh, writing this project and then when i see the result basically i would say uh, no offense but i think it's disappointing in may 2020 uh, even when i scroll down this page uh, like this when i scroll like this uh, it started a lot basically uh, I don't think it's uh, at least in 2020 it's usable yet uh, so I'm pretty much disappointed with my first trial of Flutter Web and then I basically backed up I didn't complete this project I didn't even have the code uh, anymore uh, so that's why I struggled through it but I have my second professional project uh, which is basically my task is I have to write a, a PWA uh, for an app that is actually uh, already exists uh, on the Play Store, uh, I covered some of its parts, so you guys didn't know what is it because it's not released yet. Uh, and then I'll also have to create uh, an iOS app for this as well. And then uh, one thought pop, popped off to my head: uh, probably Flutter Web is or Flutter is one good option for this because in this one it's basically a static page uh just there's just one form uh there's not much changing in this project but this is different uh, this is a pwa this is an app basically right and then i'll have to write uh, an ios uh code as well and then i wrote this starting in november 2020 so probably uh six months uh compared to the previous projects and it has improved a lot i i I'm not sure what is it uh, probably the uh, renderer engine uh, I think they they recently changing it in around October November if I'm not mistaken and then it's basically completed uh, as of now all of the things are working or are working well uh, some of the stuttering are still there at least a little bit uh, but I would say this is uh, like really really good uh, result that I get pretty much uh, the same like the original app which is written in android native so yeah i'm i'm definitely happy and i can uh and i can export it to ios as well which is like really really great right 
So what is the feature I've used? Uh, probably you guys are curious about this. What is the features I've used uh, for that project? First is the basic functionality, you know, like HTTP basic UI and then responsive UI as well. I use the analytics as well uh, for from some providers, which is already uh, have a package written in Flutter and Dart. And then I use the local storage, uh, which is using shared preferences package. It's already published as well. I use the URL launcher. Uh, which is working really really great and then i also use uh, the dart to js interrupt which basically i can call uh, javascript code from my dart and then vice versa i can call uh, my dart a function from javascript which is uh, i think su pretty sufficient for all of my use case in that project so what is the positive aspects of flutter web uh, that i've met in my that two projects or at least uh, the last one First is, I think this is the most powerful part, uh, at least for me. I think the developer experience, uh, writing UI in Flutter compared to, I knew how to write uh, web using HTML, CSS, Vue, uh, React as well. I think this is something else. Uh, this is uh, like really, really great. Uh, a lot of, at least uh, what I know is uh, two of the platforms, uh, Android native and iOS native are moving to this direction as well, right? Uh, so iOS with Swift UI and then Android with Jetpack Compose as well. So I think this is the way to do it. Uh, probably this, uh, I can uh, safely say now, confidently, uh, that this is probably the future of writing UIs, uh, even for mobile, uh, web, probably desktop as well, right? Uh, probably this is the one key points uh, that made me choose rather web for my last project. Next is, uh, pardon me for the bad circle. Uh, we can reuse our mobile code uh, to web. Say uh, in my previous project, in my last project, uh, to be exact, I have to write code for iOS app, and then I have to write a PWA as well, right? Uh, so we can have a shared package, uh, which basically consists all of the APIs, models, uh, utility functions, uh, logic, uh, basically all the uh, code that can be shared between mobile app and web app. Uh, can be inside this package and then I'll just have to uh, you know write uh, probably I don't know like 10% of the remaining code uh, uh, on each platform mobile app web and web uh, let's say for some uh, specific situations so yeah that's that's been a place for me and then next is uh, at least for me personally uh, the frameworks of web uh, there's been uh, way too much options for me. First, there is React and then uh, Vue, and then we have Svelte, which is the, uh, you know, uh, rising uh, at least in, the, in this in this past few months, right? So uh, I didn't know all of that. Uh, probably I know a little bit few, but I use uh, Flutter in my daily business. And I think uh, if I can use the skills for my efficiency, then that'll be like super, super great for me. And then next is, uh, what is the much needed improvements of Flutter Web? So first is, uh, this is probably one of the biggest pain points in using Flutter, uh, the SEO support. Uh, basically, uh, as of right now, we cannot use SEO uh, using Flutter because the SEO, uh, the search engine crawler, cannot crawl uh, the text, the strings we've had on our uh, Flutter Web projects. So basically, this is not usable. This uh, has been this issue has been I think for like two years now around, and then it's not uh, solved yet. Next is uh, the server side rendering. This is also one of the cases uh, which are being uh, searched, and then a lot of uh, thumbs ups as well. Uh, and this hasn't been fixed as well. Uh, not sure about this though. Uh, will this be supported or not in the future? And then next is uh, in mobile we had a hot restart, a uh, hot reload. Sorry. But in Flutter Web, we don't we don't have it. Uh, we only have a uh, hot restart, which basically is the same as you, you reloading your uh, Flutter Web project. So you don't uh, save save the state. Uh, let's say uh, you'll go big, you'll go back to the uh, the beginning screen of your Flutter Web project. Next is this is uh, also a little bit. Uh, I think uh, the, the at least this is my pain point. Uh, I saw this in my projects. Some parts of the text um, are not getting rendered on the PWA mode on some devices. Uh, and yeah, this is a little bit sucks as well. But yeah, I think uh, they are trying to solve this. I'm not sure if it's solved 
yet or now. Uh, next is the performance issue. This is the website at uh, the code.irobot.com. You can see on the on this uh, screenshot that it's had a lot uh, of stuttering, uh, especially on mobile. I'm not sure what uh, kind of render they are uh, using, but yeah, and that's another uh, key aspects that you had to uh, consider. Next is the flutter engine size. At least this uh, this is the canvas kit. Uh, it's the size is a little bit big, I would say. It's 2.5 MB. Uh, I saw a, a talk last night from uh, Codemate. Uh, I think in, in total they have like 4 MB of Flutter engine in size. And then what to consider before choosing Flutter web is uh, first, like, like Harris said, uh, if your project is one of these PWAs, uh, sing single page apps, or probably you had uh, or you already had a flutter mobile apps and then planning to uh, expanding to the web platform probably this is for you because you already uh, know flutter uh, you already invested uh, your time to learn flutter and write the code for it and then yeah uh, probably this is just like one more step uh, in uh, migrating the project or pro moving the project to web uh, next is the uh, last consideration is if you have uh, prior Flutter knowledge and loved it, loved uh, using Flutter to write UIs, I recommend it. I recommend this to you. Next, uh, if you've already have Flutter project and wants to expand, uh, this is good for you as well. Uh, next is uh, try to research your use case and see if all plugin uh, and use case is already supported. Uh, like if you want to use SEO, uh, probably it's not now. Uh, if you want to use uh, SSR, it's probably not now as well. And then next is uh, this. This is always changing uh, rapidly. I would say you can see that uh, from May 2020 and then November 2020, the changing is it's basically changing rapidly. So yeah, you'll have to monitor it uh, at all times, especially on master and beta channel because the changes are coming a lot from that channel so yeah uh sorry if i exceed my time uh that's my presentation if you have any question uh probably will be answering that in the next session thank you all right thank you very much anga thank you for that presentation um so i think uh there are a lot of there were a lot of content coming in from three of our speakers today um she how discuss about how the features kind of get picked up and then auto um complete as well and then uh, harry spoke about three main things uh that he thinks that uh, which came from like the key three highlights from the flutter engage and then anga shared like very good experience um how he had um like difficulties when he started off his first project and he uh, how things got solved and then how you also can contribute to the whole program as well. Um, awesome. So I think a lot of content. Now it's time to see what you know about Flutter. Um, so to do that, we have a quiz. Uh, next up, the quiz going to start off. And the host for that event, that segment going to be Haris. And we are going to invite him back to the screen. And then thank you, Anga. And we'll uh, get you back on stage for the Q&A section. All right. So let me add Haris in. And Hello. All right. Awesome. Haris, I think you have some great things in uh, place. And uh, I'm not going to take a lot of time from you. Let me uh, jump back to the backstage and then let you handle the rest. All right. So hope you guys enjoy the last uh, few talks. And now you have all your information in your mind. Now it's time to test it. So I need you guys to go grab your mobile phone. I highly recommend you to use your mobile phone in order for us to play this simple, uh, fun quiz. So we're going to use Kahoot.it. I think hopefully most of us have used uh Kahoot.it, but just go to Kahoot.it. And then the second thing is uh, to join. After you join, I'm going to pass you the pin. And it's probably also going to be sent in the YouTube or uh, Facebook comment uh, on the 
game pin. So please enter your YouTube name so we can identify you if you are the winner. So if you don't type your YouTube name or your uh, Facebook name, then you can't win. So winners, please screenshot the Kahoot to this uh, email. We will probably put in this email as well inside the comments once you have uh, win this. So it's dev space, dev, dev space dash sg at google.com okay so now i'm going to share uh where is it okay all right so i'm going to share and then let's uh let me uh switch on the music so i'm not going to share this first and then i'm going to share with audio so you guys at least have that vibe of you know playing the game. So, uh, Shafras, could you share my screen again? Thank you so much. And let's, uh, hopefully, let's join in. All right. So, uh, all right. So, currently, let's see how many viewers we have inside YouTube. So, I will wait for maybe around two minutes. So after two minutes, then we will start our Kahoot quiz. Okay, let's see how many people are there currently. So there are 19 participants. That's very uh, well done. So there's like 45 people who are watching in YouTube. Hopefully all 45 of you can uh, join as well. So you guys have like one more minute to, uh, oh, and sorry, once you win this quiz, you can get prizes. So who, do, who doesn't like free prizes? So please uh, add in. As, uh, so just join in. And then at the same time, um, because of the live stream, there will be a delay for the questions. So the questions will actually be popping up on your kahoot.it screen. So if you're using a phone, just look at the phone and that's the most updated. If you're if you using a web browser to play this game, use the web browser because there'll be a question on top and then you can answer directly because you have uh, a few seconds to answer this question. <coughs> So yes. All right. So now it's 8.18. I'll give like a 10 second countdown. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Let's get started with the first question. All right. So the first question is, when did Flutter became stable? Is it 2017, 2018, 2019, or 2020? So like I say, the questions will appear on your phone or on the website where you have joined Kahoot. All right. So you can take your time. Think about which year exactly. Is it last year? Is it two years ago? Is it three day years ago? And the answer is... 2018 December. So most of you got it right. Some of you was thinking 2019, but we'll see. So the first person, Muhrahmatula, is first place, Jandra Darmo, second place, Ayush, third place. So we're only giving prizes for the top three. So it's anyone's game. Let's go for the next question. True or false? Flutter can run up to 120 FPS. Hmm. Can it run 120 FPS? Can it run faster than 120 FPS? Let's see. Alright. It's true. Your Flutter uh, device can actually run up to 120 FPS because that's how fast Flutter is. So let's see who is now at the top lead. Jandra Darmo is in the first place, Abdullah second, and uh, Solisin.10 uh, is third place. Sorry if I mispronounce it. Let's go to the next question. Can Flutter cannot be run on Chromebook? True or false? 
Flutter cannot be run on Chromebook. You can run it on a, a, a MacBook. You can run it on a Windows laptop, but can it run on a Chromebook? We'll see. Can it run on a phone? <laughs> and the answer is false. So if you were to press quickly through, um, yeah, it is basically a negative negative. So Flutter can run on a Chromebook. All right, so let's see who's the first place. Abdullah went up to the first place. Second place, Solisin. Third place, Jandra. And Tristan, you have moved up five places, but this is anyone's game. Let's go to the fourth question. What are the Flutter web renderers? Are they HTML skier? Canvas kit skier? So if you were paying attention during Anga's slides, there were the renderers, but is it HTML, Canvas kit, and skier? So which one is the correct one? All right, choose your question. I mean, choose your answer correctly. All right, congratulations. It's HTML and Canvas Kit. So Skia is a rendering engine. So you have to be pretty... Uh, you have to really see the questions above. All right, so Abdullah is in the first place, Chandra, second place, and third place, Sol is in. All right, so let's go to the fifth question. Which widget does not exist? All right. So widgets app, Cupertino app, Material app, or all of these widgets exist? Hmm. So we might know one, or is it everyone? All right. Have you used these apps before? That's the question. And the answer might shock you. All right, the answer is all of these widgets exist. So there is a, a thing called a widgets app. So now you probably want to like Google what a widgets app is. So the first place, Abdullah, second place, Chandra. Oh, and the third place goes to Sean. That is uh, someone new that I've never seen. All right, really, really nice. All right, let's go to the sixth place. What does, sixth question, I mean, what does an off-stage widget do? Hmm, I'm giving you one minute because there's a lot of words that you need to read. So does an off-stage widget lay the widget without a key? Controls the rendering stage of a widget? Lays the widget without painting or it controls the visibility of the widget. So I see, I think a lot of people or a lot of you guys might be, you know, googling what the offset widget is. Uh, so you guys got 20 seconds left. What does an offset widget app does? So the faster you get the correct answer, the more points you will get. <coughs> All right, let's see who got it correct. All right, well done. It lays the widget without painting. So the clue is from the word of stage, right? So let's... Uh, see who is in the top lead. All right, so Abdullah is still in first place, Chandra second place, Sol is in third place. So let's go. Seventh question, which is not a Flutter widget? Which is not a Flutter widget? Is it baseline? Is it flow? Is it spacer? Or is it space? All right, so I think you guys are like wondering which one, why did they name their widgets as such. So let's see if you got it correct. And all right. So not everyone got it correct. I think half of you guys correct. So there is no such thing as a space widget, but there is a widget that's called spacer. I think also some of you guys want to know what's a flow widget and such. All right. So let's see how it works. All right. Wow. So first place, Jandra, second, Solisin, and third place, Black Puppy, the underdog. So 
you see the pun. All right, next one. Which now safety? How do you with now safety? How do you make a nullable variable? So let's see which one makes a nullable variable. So I give you guys one minute to know to see which one is the correct answer. So is it with an exclamation mark? Is it a normal variable? Is it a question mark, or is does it have a or syntax with a null value? Even though I talk about how to migrate to null safety, I have not really shown you how to create a nullable variable. But yeah, maybe you guys would know how to make a nullable variable. All right, I think most of you guys got it correct. So it is with a question mark. So with the exclamation mark, uh, that means you're forcing that variable to be non-nullable. And then I guess uh, this is a very JavaScript syntax. <laughs> but I guess without null safety, this is a nullable variable. All right, so let's see who is in the top place. All right, so everyone got it correct, which is good. All right, so next one. How do you make an image to a circle? All right. So do you have a circle avatar with an image as a background image? Do you have a circle avatar with an image as a child? Do you have an image in a container with a circle shape? Or do you have a circle avatar with an image as a foreground image? So if you guys have used these widgets, then you probably know the answer. But there's also a trick question with this answer. So you have to choose your answer correctly. Even though all of this answer makes sense, but there's always a twist behind it. <laughs> all right, so I think most of you guys got shocked. Oh no, I thought a circle avatar with an image child will work. Not really. An image in container with circle shape does not cut the image. So the correct answer is a circle avatar with a background image or a foreground image. All right, so let's go to the next one. Oh, Sean has risen up from the ashes and became second place. Then Chandra with the first uh, with the first one and then Solis in the third one. All right. Okay, the uh, third last question. Flutter mascot name is Dash. Is it true or false? This is a pretty simple answer. If you guys don't know, the Flutter mascot is named Dash, but is it spelled correctly? Hmm. Choose any answer before it. Oh! <laughs> Okay, so the <laughs> all right, I'm surprised by this response. Half of you guys got me correct. So the name of Dash is without an uh, extra H, so it's actually D A S H, not D A S H H. Oh no, so only half of you guys got it correct. So Chandra is still in the lead, Sean is second place, and the third place is a new contender, Muhrah Matuwa. I think I think heard this name before all right and children you have risen to the top as well so the second last question which language do you code in flutter is it skia is it flutter script is it dart plus plus or is it dart so this is a very simple answer <laughs> if you don't know the answer i understand if you are not a flutter developer or have not heard of flutter uh, but this is a very straightforward answer. And let's see who got it correct. I hope all of you got it correct. All right. Who answered that plus plus? That is... <laughs> someone is trolling or someone just didn't know about Flutter. But that's fine. So most of you guys got it correct, which is what I've expected. And yeah, uh, everyone got it correct. All of the positions are still uh, remains the same. Now, the last question will the will uh, make it or break it if you were to win the prize for these five uh, people in this core board. Last question: Is this fun? 
<laughs> so caveat, um, you could say that all of the answers are correct. <laughs> There's no right or wrong answer. Yep. So let's see how we how how do you think uh, you uh, perceive this quiz? All right. So yeah, and one person has nothing to say, but that's fine. So thank you guys so much for joining, and let's see who is the top three winner. Drum roll, please. Third place goes to Mahramatullah. Congratulations. Second place goes to. Sean Wu and the first place. Let's give it up to Chandra Dharmo. Congratulations, winners! Now I need you guys to uh, screenshot your name and uh, and also send it to the developer space dash sg at google.com. So congratulations guys You guys really have it uh, You guys deserve it uh, Alright So now we are going to move on to the next section So screenshot And then uh, yes uh, Send it to the dev space email Awesome That was a very exciting quiz and I think uh, a lot of people learned about Flutter through this quiz and also I think uh, they also had fun uh, during the process. Thank you very much, Harris, for that very wonderful uh, quiz session. Um, so I would love to have you on stage for a while because we are going to start off with the uh, quiz section, uh, like the quick Q&A section. Uh, to moderate this section, we actually do have um, our uh, uh, Flutter Singapore organizer, German. Uh, German is also a senior um, engineering manager at Grab here in Singapore. And he also hosts a vibrant community uh, over here as well uh, in terms of talking about a lot of um, detailed topics, technical topics on uh, Flutter. So without taking much time, let me add to add German and then I'll add the rest of the speakers as well. Um, and German will continue with the Q&A session. All right. Welcome, German. Yeah, uh, hello everyone. And I'm really happy to be here, except Harris uh, didn't allow me to participate <laughs> in this amazing, amazing thing. No, you know all amazing. of the answer. Yeah. <laughs> Two of the winners are from Indonesia, actually. Ah, so, yeah. Congratulations. Wow. <laughs> yeah, so, they were regulars. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. So, so I'm going to uh, jump to backstage and German. Over to you. Yep. Uh, thank you, Shafraz. So uh, let's start uh, with our questions. And uh, I encourage everyone to drop uh, anything uh, in comments, uh, YouTube or Facebook. Uh, but we will go one by one. And actually, I'm really happy to see uh, the very first question uh, that uh, we received uh, uh, from the form before the event during registration. And like, it's really amazing. So. <laughs> Like it's Flutter event, but uh, what do you really think about React Native? Uh, what's the high point uh, of Flutter, and uh, uh, does this guy need to migrate or just uh, keep both? So, uh, our experts, who is going to take this? I can start. Um, basically, for the first question about React Native, I personally don't know too much. I've never used it before, um, but. Every framework seems to have its strengths and weaknesses. Like, you know, you might pick Flutter. Um, I mean, you might prefer Flutter for some use cases, and you might prefer React Native for some cases. Um, as for the second question, uh, I'm not exactly sure what higher point means. So if you could clarify with a follow-up question, um, I might be able to answer it. Um, as for whether you need to migrate or just keep both, um, if you're referring to um, null safety migration, um, you know, you can keep your Dart, you can keep your Flutter code uh not null safe but you know we strongly encourage um migrating it to be null safe oh it was a very diplomatic answer from person from <laughs> <Atlanta>. <laughs> so uh probably uh Anga harris uh any thoughts uh let me add in so i've actually tried uh react native before i actually taught a class 
on React Native. So personally, uh, I'm not. I guess once you go Flutter, you don't go back. You know the kind of thing. Personally, uh, for React Native, there hit there are ups and downs. So I guess um, there is this feature where you're able to push. Uh, your changes through the web. So, like for I forgot what's the feature called, but it's like when you change it uh, in your, for example, uh, when you push it to GitHub, and then it will update the app. You don't have to push it through the App Store and Play Store in a sense that it updates it live, that kind of thing. So, Expo, I think. Uh, yes, Expo. Expo. But I don't know what's that feature where you're yeah. able to, yeah. But so I guess that's uh, the advantage of like uh, React Native. You can you know update it live using Expo and whatnot. Uh, but for Flutter, uh, there is an issue I remembered where you are able that that people wants to do that uh, similar feature. But I think the Flutter team said that no, we are we know we want to render it through native and then we don't because you have a lot of uh, things to go through in terms of policy when you want to push it through the app store or when you want, when, when you want to do it in the play store as well so i guess like uh flutter sticks to his gun and just went through with uh being a, a native app uh framework and yeah i think it works well as well so it really depends on the situation like uh, shihao mentioned that uh whether you want to use react native or flutter you know, because I guess both have its own advantages and disadvantages. Yeah. Anger, do you want to add anything? All right. Uh, probably I'll just add uh, a little bit. So basically the difference, uh, as far as I know, uh, between Flutter and React Native is Flutter is a canvas. Uh, and basically it's just a canvas, right? Uh, you can uh, draw anything in there uh, that you want or probably that is being provided by the Flutter team. Uh, as uh, the React Native is a little bit different in a sense that it grabs uh, the actual widget from the uh, like each platform, right? Uh, either Android and, and iOS. So probably if you want to get more native experience, uh, I would say that the React Native uh, is a little bit better than Flutter. Uh, but also there's, uh, you know, a downside of this, right? Uh, especially when you want to grab uh, that component from the each platform you have to have uh, like time for communication right uh, to get that actual components and then say if th that exact components is updating you'll have to wait for uh, the component from react native to be updated as well so there's a lot of ups and downs but i think uh, you'll have to try it as at least once uh, i'm not saying that flutter is uh, like the way to go uh, for for everyone but i would say uh, yeah just try it uh, at least once and then do what's best for you uh, if you like flutter uh, rather than uh, react native uh, like the code uh, the way how it how you code it and then the components uh, etc so probably you'll have to go for react native other otherwise uh go to go for flutter i think yeah okay uh, thanks everyone. Let's uh, move on. So, next question is uh, to Harris. Uh, what's about uh, common Flutter stacks and uh, web projects customization? So, um, Flutter stacks, I guess you might be uh, referring to like what is the front end stack and the back end stack for Flutter and plus something else, right? So I guess there's many that you can use. Flutter, it's already a UI toolkit. So the the thing to power the data to show on your Flutter apps can be the most common ones are Firebase. Um, and now there is the AWS Amplify. So it's just like uh, the AWS version of uh, uh, Firebase where it has like uh, data and then analytics and such. So uh, you have that as well. And then if you really want to um, go to like relational database or those like database where it's uh, you you want to have, uh, for example, MySQL uh, or those kind of like databases that, you know, you need to uh, learn SQL as, as, as well. So I think there's a lot that you can play with. And yeah, uh, in terms of web projects, customizability, uh, I think Anga can answer that question because he's very experienced. <laughs> uh, 
Alright, uh, let me continue. Uh, let me uh, add into that one. Uh, in terms of web projects customizability, uh, I think uh, as far as I know, uh, it's pretty much, uh, how do I say this, like customizable. Because Dart uh, has already uh, have a package called Dart HTML and then Dart JS as well, which uh, lets us uh, developers basically to customize anything uh, on the HTML document, uh, the JavaScript site uh, to the uh, index index.html that we use as well, and then as far as I can say, uh, at least on my experience, uh, it's pretty customizable, uh, but you have to uh, take use case uh, i can't say yes for all use case because there's a lot of use case right uh, you have to espe especially see that uh, the plugins are supported for your use case yet or not if not uh, probably you'll have to wait a little bit because uh, you don't want to spend a lot of time you know writing all of that code which uh, usually we get from plugins say like or firebase or something yeah okay Thank you. Uh, next one. Uh, why Flutter apps are heavier than basic Android app? And uh, is it true or not? Shehao? Yeah, I can try and answer this one. Um, the answer for this is it kind of depends. So every Flutter app has a like a fixed overhead size for, for all the various parts of the Flutter framework. So every time you upload an, uh, a Flutter app, you need to um, bundle in the framework with it as well. And there's like a, there's just that small overhead size. So it also might depend on entirely on how the app is architected. You know, like the Android app and the Flutter app is like completely different. So it's really hard to compare one to one. I think your best bet is to basically just um, like do a size comparison itself for every app. And I'm pretty sure the result will be very different depending on the size of your app and the way you architect both your native app and your Flutter app. Um, I'll try and find the link for the size of the, the Flutter um, bundle that comes with every app um, and share it on the YouTube live stream. Okay, thank you. Uh, next one, uh, Anger, web. How to custom yes. around. Yeah. yeah, this is on my slide already as well. Uh, so this is the new addition to the Flutter uh, web as well uh, announced on the Flutter Engage last week uh, so it's called URL strategies uh, we can basically change the URL I think uh, GDE from San Francisco Mariano Zorilla also write uh, like a code pen for this uh, which he basically creates a sample web app a Flutter web app uh, when he clicks a button uh, it will basically change all the URL inside your browser which is very cool I think so yeah, I think uh, pretty much it's already there inside the flutter.dev websites. Thanks, Anger. And probably uh, the second of my favorite questions. Uh, Google likes to kill projects. Uh, so Shekhao, do you think that Flutter uh, will survive? What is the future? I mean, based on my experience so far, I'm pretty sure it's here to stay. Uh, Google has been investing really heavily um, you know, there's a bunch of Google projects that already depend on Flutter that are new, like GPay, Fuchsia, Stadia. And, you know, we're also actively growing our scope and like our team, and we're not slowing down as you can tell from Flutter, excuse me, from Flutter 2. Uh, and uh, just to add a little bit as uh, like, I really like Flutter and uh, just to wait more. Uh, I believe more and more companies uh, uh, have already started using Flutter or like uh, you like I use in Flutter for quite a while like even for uh, this engage event uh, I think uh, there were quite few uh, new names like Toyota and so on and uh, like a lot of uh, Chinese companies and uh, there uh, there are also uh, news about uh, spikes in uh, jobs for Flutter developers so uh, the future looks uh, Pretty good. Okay, uh, let's move to questions from YouTube. So uh, the first one: uh, How to start photo development and stay consistent uh, if a person uh, from a different development framework? So Anyone? I guess uh, I can I can share uh, my experience. Uh, so. 
how to start Flutter development stay consistent. I guess um, one thing that a lot of developers have is side projects that die. <laughs> I think most of us have, right? So I guess one thing that I've realized uh, that makes you more motivated in you know, learning something is to actually solve a problem that you have. So for example, if you can't wake up early in the morning, you can create a Flutter app uh, that's an uh, alarm clock, but maybe have a twist, you know, instead of like uh, having a typical alarm sound, you can record some, you know, voice or put input some weird sounds and then, yeah, make a simple Flutter app from that as well. And then what I've done uh, personally is, uh, I mean, if you want to, you can do a live stream. So I guess that live stream will really help you like be in that zone because sometimes we are distracted. <laughs> so like if you're in live stream, there's nothing else you do but code. So you have that accountability of people looking at you and looking at your code. Even though I think most of us can uh, relate like our, when we code, whether it's a first project or if it's a, a framework, our usual first code is not very nice, pretty ugly, spaghetti code, whatever. But that doesn't matter because I think we learn, we get better as we go. So yeah, so two things. Uh, one is to create a project that solves your problem because you get motivated to solve that problem. And second, to have accountability. It can be a live stream. You can join the Flutter group, Meetup, Telegram group, right, German? So, yeah, and then, sure. yes, then you can share the projects. And then, yeah, we will also definitely uh, uh, will comment on it as well. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Harris. And uh, as you started a uh, cross-referral uh, program, uh, let me highlight <laughs> something as well while I'm looking for uh, the next question. So, uh, give me a second. Uh, no problem. Yeah, so uh, next one. Uh, a lot of uh, Flutter packages uh, still does not uh, do not support uh, web features. Uh, when uh, will it be available for usage? Probably I'm going to answer this. Uh, yes, uh, this is valid. Uh, a lot of packages, at least on my watch, uh, there are some packages uh, that aren't supported yet by Flutter Web. Probably what I'm going to say is I'm going to encourage you uh, to try and contribute to that uh, exact packages uh, that you use. Because uh, there's definitely a lot of resource uh, for you guys to, you know, expand that packages. Uh, let's say previously it was only for Android and iOS. Uh, you can try and, you know, explore it yourself, uh, which you'll, uh, you know, improve your knowledge as well, right? Uh, but if you ask me when will it be available, uh, I can say uh, because uh, every package is different. Uh, some package is uh, even being handled by like one person, right? Uh, probably we can't push uh, him to him or her to, you know, uh, create the Flutter web port as uh, fast as possible because probably he or she had other jobs or something. So yeah, what yeah. what I, I'm trying to say is uh, I want to encourage you guys to also contribute to that as well, which will be really great. Uh, okay, thanks. Uh, while I'm looking for another question, uh, there is some friend request. Probably QB Production is looking for Flutter guy. Uh, and uh, let's uh, move on. So, Shihao, you were highlighted uh, in this question. So, since how to complete and draw how to complete follow material guidelines, uh, do we have any plans for how to complete for Cupertino? Yeah, I saw Ayush found the answer to this question on the design doc, but the answer is I looked and I couldn't find an iOS equivalent widget for it. So then we're putting it on hold for now. But if there is a widget and we just happen to miss it, um, I mean, the iOS component for it, um, point it out and like um, share it on the design doc and we'll definitely get to it. Um, also a slight correction, the raw to complete doesn't follow material guidelines. It's um, that one's supposed to be the more generic one. Only the autocomplete one follows material guidelines. Okay. Uh, thanks. And uh, we have quite a few questions from uh, Tristan. Uh, let's start with the first one. Uh, does anyone uh, know what is the smallest size of Flutter Web App? 
Yeah, uh, actually I watch uh, the code mate uh, meetup last night. Uh, it's discussing mo- most mostly about Flutter web uh, and uh, I think uh, it said that uh, the canvas kit uh, size of the Flutter web app is around 4 4 to 4.5 megabytes which is quite big I think for now. Uh, and then the in my slides as well uh, I can see that it's 2.5 MB and then other uh, other dart file I think uh, which uh, adds up to 1 MB so probably around 3 to 4 MB but worry not uh, actually this this is being fetched uh, through the CDN uh, which uh, I think uh, most of the browsers will uh, intelligently cache uh, so once you open a Flutter web app and then let's say you open another one uh, which is being uh, built using flutter as well then it will use that cage instead of uh you know fetching the new one so yeah worry not okay thanks Angler. and uh next one uh again about web so here uh the question is in mobile app uh to web up video at flutter engage i saw that the generated web code adds uh, all the script files to download in the header so how does it affect uh, impact uh, download speed of Flutter app? Okay, uh, I'm trying to answer this one as well. Uh, everyone feel free to uh, add up uh, to my answer. So uh, as far as I know, it doesn't uh, is it doesn't interfere with the mobile app because it used uh, like a different uh, mechanism, right? Uh, for Flutter web, uh, it will use it will create uh, like a folder inside your Flutter project called web. Uh, in inside there, it, uh, there will be an index.html file, which which will be uh, accessed by your users, and then for Android, uh, there will be a separate folder, right? Uh, Android, and then for iOS as well, and then if you uh, support desktop, there will be a different folders as well. So yeah, uh, basically, uh, once you export it uh, for a production build, it will only uh, use uh, the like exact platform that you're using either for Android, iOS, web, desktop, etc. Yeah. Any other thoughts? Should we move on? Okay. Uh, and looks like last question from Tristan. Is it possible to customize HTML rendering to defer the download of the script files. It's not very user-friendly if we need to manually change the HTML code after build generation. This is a very, very interesting question. Thank you, uh, Tristan Lucas, uh, for the question. Yeah, actually, I, I already used this in my project. Uh, like I said previously, right? We have the total control over our HTML file and then JavaScript file as well because there's already a package. Uh, I think it's being used by Angular Dart. Uh, Dart HTML and Dart JS, uh, which uh, we have all of the control over our HTML source code and then JavaScript source code as well. Uh, to give you guys an idea, I use this to uh, because in in web, if you guys are not familiar, if we want to use Firebase, we have to add uh, like the Firebase credentials on the top of the HTML, right? So I use that uh, to uh, I use the this change the html code mechanism to uh, supply that exact line uh, to give the credentials of my firebase uh, from my dart file so basically i didn't have to change my index.html every time i want to change let's say from development environment uh, staging production everything is uh, being done via the mm. uh, dart so yeah that's uh, that's cool thanks and I thought stateless uh, would be hot uh, reload. So uh, I believe that question was about supporting uh, hot reload. In uh, web. Yes. Yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure what uh, is, is the Flutter team's uh, plan uh, about this. Probably Shihao knows more. Uh, but yeah, as far as I know, uh, whenever it, you. Uh, want to restart or you or you want to reload the code from your flutter web projects uh, you hit the uh, r capital r uh, in your terminal and then basically it, it reloading it doesn't remember any any of the state uh, that you have uh, previously 
you'll be you'll be back to the be the very beginning of your app. Uh, probably it will be supported uh, in the near future. I know uh, frameworks like React and then Vue already support this, right? Uh, whenever we change our files, uh, the content of the web uh, will be updated uh, automatically as well. We don't have to reload or anything. So yeah, I'm hoping uh, this will be uh, supported in the near future. And I'm pretty, pretty confident, I would say. Yeah, don't have too much to add to that. Um, basically, it's definitely on the radar of the Flutter web team. They always talk about it, and it always comes up during meetings. Mm -hmm. uh, Shihao, do you have any insights uh, why it's hard to implement, or why it's delayed? Unfortunately, I don't. Um, I, I'm sure there's a GitHub issue about it. I personally don't work too much with the web, so I'm sorry I can't answer this one. Uh, no worries. We have uh, probably a special question uh, for you. Uh, from Ayush, uh, are we going to incorporate adaptive scaffold in SDK itself? Uh, I, I don't think this has ever come up, but um, maybe we could file an issue for it and see if it's popular and see what happens. Um, I think it's a good idea, but I'm, I don't think anyone has ever brought it up on the team. So Ayush, please consider uh, to rewatch uh, presentation and slides from Shahao and uh, go this way. I'll try to submit the issue. Okay, uh, let's move on. Uh, while I am uh, looking for the next question, <laughs> uh, so please, uh, congrats. And probably next one. Uh, does Flutter team, uh, uh, would be there any more videos uh, for widgets uh, of the week? I didn't even know they, did they discontinue it? I actually haven't been keeping track. I think right now uh, they are uh, working. I th I think I saw the boring Flutter development with mm -hmm. Philip and Fitz. Uh, so yeah, probably that's uh, like the substitute of it, of it. It's great as well. Great content. There's also yeah, a package yeah. of the week. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I think. That one too. That one too. Yeah. Right. They when might have moved on to other stuff. Yeah. Maybe. Sorry. But uh, personally, I feel that uh, Widget of the Week has been very helpful because there are tons of widgets, as you can see from the quiz, that you guys don't know. <laughs> so I believe in my heart that Widget of the Week will still go on. <laughs> uh, so probably here we need to get banner for some YouTube channel from all one of our speakers. But uh, <laughs> let's move on. What about localiz uh, localization when we use Firestore? Can we do localization? It should be possible. I'm, I haven't um, done localization with Firestore particularly, but I don't see why it wouldn't work. Um, I can take a look and um, dive deeper and see if there's any issues with that. I think so, uh, another alternative, uh, sorry to interrupt, uh, probably oh, another alternative oh. that we can also do is uh, we can also use the Firestore to, let's say, uh, store to translation of the price, let's say, or some text or strings. Mm -hmm. uh, we have, uh, we can use uh, like the language code, right? Uh, let's say ID ID is for Indonesian, and then EN EN is for uh, English, uh, something like that uh, should work, I think. Okay. And next one. Uh, it's also amazing, kind of. The third question about Holy War. So basically, what is the recommended way uh, for state management? So um, I guess, I think, uh, OK, oh, yeah. Uh, Shahao, you can start first. Uh, yeah, um, basically, the Flutter team goes over this all the time. And the answer is always, it depends. There are so many different <laughs> ways to handle state management in Flutter, and they're all really different. And you know every app has a different use case. Like some apps might be simpler. You might personally prefer writing apps in a specific way versus another way. So we don't. We try not to say, oh, you know, what's a recommended way or not, because you know we will likely steer a bunch of people the wrong way just by saying that. Mm. So I guess um, from what I've seen so far, in uh, I mean, this is a topic that I always been pop up in the Flutter Reddit, many other channels, right? So like um, after like going through, because I've, I think I've went through the different stages of like, 
what's the Flutter provider? I mean, what's the Flutter state management from block and then now provider? So I, I think personally, I would recommend if you are a newbie and you don't know what direction, uh, then I'll recommend provider because I think provider is the most that makes sense and it's uh, easier than other state providers that I have explored so far. So provider, I would highly recommend you to go. And even in the Flutter documentation, uh, when they introduce state management as a concept, they use provider as well. So even though it's not like, a ah, you must use, but it's a, a gentle push to provider. Mm -hmm. But I'm, I, for myself, I hard push provider because it's so, there's, there's always this question and I'm just going to say provider. Yep. But this is only when you are, when you are a beginner who's learning state management. As an experienced developer, you definitely will learn a lot of state management like Redux, uh, Block, Providers, and whatnot in other um, frameworks that you have experienced so far. So it, it really depends. But as a newbie, Provider for Flutter. Anger, uh, what did you use for your web publications? Yeah, uh, I have used a uh, couple of them uh, at uh, like at 2018 uh, like really old times I used scope model at the beginning like the very beginning mm. right and then after that I moved to the block and then after that I used redux uh, I tried mobbacks as well and then I uh, recently I, I fell in love basically with a provider because it's so simple so probably mm. I'm going to be uh, I'm going to agree with Harris uh, that if you are a newbie probably provider is the best for you because uh everything else uh has you know some strict rules that you have to know. but uh i confident that probably you have to try at least once uh try to create this like a very simple project uh just uh, let's say as like a simple calculator and then try it for yourself uh because there's no uh like a true answer for this right uh you you just do what you have to do if you're comfortable with a uh, provider rather than block or redux probably you, you'll have to use that so yeah probably that thanks everyone uh next one from anand uh from uh, if google already has android uh why we have flutter yeah so I think the way I understand it from when I hear it from the leadership is that Flutter is basically Google's push for cross-platform UI framework. And then we have Android for like specifically for mobile. And it just basically serves two very different use cases. So like, as you can tell from Flutter 2, now we suddenly support web, we support desktop, and we also support some embedded systems with the announcement with Toyota. So basically, um, yeah, it's just two very different use cases. And that's why um, both of them exist. Okay, thank you. And we have a few more questions. Uh, Ahmad is asking, uh, what are some repositories that uh, showcase best practices and architectures for Flutter, like except Harris, your channel uh, in YouTube? I do know <laughs> anything. So I guess, I guess um, um, go for it. sorry, oh yeah. So I think uh, the answer is already in the question. You can go to the Flutter repository and you actually can like read through their documentation and actually feel how the Flutter developers themselves code uh, the whole Flutter repository itself. At the same time, um, Flutter has also samples that you actually can look through. So there's like the Flutter gallery and then there's also other samples as well. Um, and then I think if you really want to like, you know, create like a hard, um, like a big project, uh, then I think uh, there is this company that's called Very Good Ventures, where they use Flutter as, uh, as their tech for, to develop uh, apps for clients, right? So they just created this uh, command line interface that allows you to build, you know, scalable apps uh, and then they, I've tried it and they've uh, generated like a couple of files, like your widget testing, your integration testing. And then they also have added in internalization from just one line of like a uh, command. Uh, and I think uh, that's a good place for you to start if you are looking for like scalable architecture that 
uh, the very good ventures people have already uh, went through and iterate through. Yeah. Uh, anyone to add? Yeah, uh, I have something to add. Uh, I remember that uh, Brian Egan uh, and Philip Hrajek also uh, are contributing uh, to like create a Flutter template uh, for this exact use mm. case. Uh, so you might yeah. want to follow them as well. Uh, Brian, I think uh, the Twitter account is Brian Egan and Philip Project, or Philip H. I'm not sure. Uh, try to uh, like get updates uh, from that guy because uh, those guys are awesome. Uh, also, I remember last night when watching the Codemate uh, meetup uh, that Flutter team is actually working on. Oh no no no, sorry, it was on the Engage. Uh, the I Ian Hickson uh, was saying that. Uh, Flutter team is basically uh, are preparing that for uh, yeah that one is really great yeah Brian again Flutter Accenture samples uh, Flutter team I think uh, is also uh, preparing that uh, architecture samples so that whenever you run Flutter create probably you'll have more options uh, like Android right you have freedom to uh, create uh, an app based on you know only one page map apps uh, make map map page or something like that so yeah. Uh, let's see in the coming future. Okay. Yeah, I can also add on to it a little bit. Oh, sorry. But yeah, um, yeah. if you go to github.com slash flutter slash gallery, um, it basically has a whole bunch of sample apps like wrapped into one. And it's also kind of, it kind of, um, it's an adaptive app. So it like adapts to whether you build it on desktop, on web, on mobile. Mm. It has localization set up. It also includes like any of the, um, the more recent things that are added to the framework. For example, I just, made the whole thing state restorable for iOS and um, Android. So if you need a tutorial for that, that's also included in the gallery. So we try to keep the gallery as updated on best practices and like as, and latest developments as possible. Thank you, Shahal. And I believe we have two more questions. Uh, Ahmad, uh, another whole of our question. Monaripo, uh, to Monaripo or not to Monaripo. So, uh, any thoughts? Yeah, I actually have uh, Monaripo. I, I actually am, uh, how do I say, like, like managing Monoripos currently in my day-to-day uh, -day job. Uh, basically, uh, our first idea of uh, making Monoripo was uh, we want to create uh, like a mobile app uh, Android and iOS, and then we want to support web and then desktop as well uh, for the product, right? Everything is, is is being built using Flutter. So we had, uh, let's say, like this uh, SDK package uh, separately for uh, all of the logics, all of the like basic widgets, uh, non-platform specific. Uh, so, but I, I have also a previous experience uh, on Monorepo as well. Uh, but that one is for Android native and iOS native as well. So basically, we had uh, this uh, uh, one repository uh, holding the Android native project and then iOS native project. So I think the thing about Monorepo is you have to uh, look at your use case. Uh, does it suit you? For me personally, uh, probably if uh, the first case was really good for Monorepo because uh, we want to have uh, different projects different flutter projects to support let's say web uh, and then mobile and then let's say desktop but we want to share the code between them right Be so that we uh you know repeat ourselves repeat the code that we that we have written uh so yeah i think that uh, at least in my opinion was a good uh, was a good choice uh, i enjoyed it right now uh, using the monorepo for that exact use case uh, probably that'll help you guys Thanks. Uh, any other thoughts? One, two. Okay, then Harris, uh, there is a request, please uh, uh, share your slides probably, and you can uh, drop uh, command line utility from your presentation uh, that allow our guests to check. Right, is the CLI um, for the migration null safety or is it for the because i think ahmad also said awesome after that uh but is the very good ventures cli 
if you were referring to the architectural um, best practices. So I'll probably uh, will also share it in the chat as well. Yep. Uh, great. And uh, actually, we have a very last question. So <laughs> what would be the prices for quiz winners? Who wants to take it? Tough for us. <laughs> <laughs> what was the prizes? I am not sure, but Sharfas probably could answer that. Yeah. Yeah. Then uh, 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 Google Developer Space uh, will uh, contact you. So please send uh, uh, email with your screenshots. And I think uh, that's all questions that we have today. And uh, I would like to thank uh, everyone, like uh, all our guests and uh, all our speakers, uh, especially like Quiz, uh, favorite one. Uh, I hope everyone uh, had fun. So thanks for joining. Shafras. Awesome. I think there was this one question I should be answering. So the gift is going to be virtual. So it's a surprise. Let the uh, winners reveal it for us. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, thank you very much, German. Thank you very much, Haris. Thank you very much, um, Shihao. And thank you, Anga, for joining with us today for the regional uh, engagement that we had. Um, great uh, responses, a lot of engagement. Uh, thank you very much for all this all the viewers who stayed until the end, even though the yeah, event has gone up for a little bit over two hours, still we have um, engagement, still we have questions coming in. Thank you very much for that. Um, so I think uh, there were a couple of uh, links as well that you might want to kind of um, check out uh, related to documentation, related to groups that you can join. Please do go and join. Uh, Flutter is growing. And then you can keep the conversations going as well. And if you're new to Flutter, please go and check check out uh, what this all about. Um, and if you're coming from a mobile space as well. So I think that's all for today. And uh, thank you, everyone, for joining. And hopefully, um, German and the team will be announcing about the Flutter Singapore next meetup as well in the coming weeks. Um, and then Anga is very actively uh, helping us out in Indonesia to host Flutter activities. So if you are based out of Indonesia, do go and check out uh, Flutter Indonesia. Um, and she how uh, for sure we would love to have you as a speaker with uh, another topic in a future event as well. Uh, and um, all of your contributions are highly um, respected, appreciated. Um, because this is a community trying to empower the rest of the community. So this is de by developers for developers. Um, so thank you everyone for joining today. And hopefully we'll meet up again with another uh, Flutter event in the future. Thank you very much. Have a good night and make yourself a good dinner. Take care. Thank you guys. Bye-bye. everyone. Thank you all. Bye.